Good morning, church. Welcome to worship today on the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. I am Pastor Julie Grafe, and it is my privilege to serve here at Our Savior Lutheran Church, and it's also my privilege to make sure our audio is working today. If you saw me uh, doing a little uh, running and doing a few little prayers, uh, we do have our audio working today. So uh, special thanks to Alex, who's on the ball, and we could get that um, all uh, set up for everybody. Um, today is our kickoff of this Him Madness tournament, which um, is something new and something different and something that's just for some summer fun for everyone, for everyone here in the congregation, any one of your friends or family members, grandchildren, neighbors, everybody has opinions about hymns, and I see people already hanging them. We have two parts to this. One is this thing that we call a bracket. A bracket is basically your decision tree, right? And this is what we'll be following along and entering as everybody uh, in each round, as each hymn wins a round, it progresses. Uh, out in the narthex. So if you're interested in, in winning that uh, or playing along or predicting, please fill out one of these brackets. If, if it's confusing, ask. It's just for fun. There's never a problem in asking a question. But what I do need you all to today, all of you who are in worship, is in your bulletin, we have the matchups. One hymn versus another. This is where you're going to have to pick. Pick which one's your favorite, the one you like the best, and turn that in. For those who are not in worship today, or if you won't be in worship next week for round two, every Monday we will be sending out an electronic version. So you can click on your which hymn you want to pick, and you can win. And if you um, are a Chicago voter and you want to vote again electronically for fun, there's no names on this, so we'll take whatever votes uh, we receive. All voting has to be in by Wednesday morning so we can move along with the rounds. But it's something you can share with your friends and family. And uh, also remember, we've created a playlist. So if you don't remember the, the hymn tune, we do have a, a playlist available that you can uh, listen to those hymns. So anyway, long announcement. It's all for fun. And Jan has a question. Yes. Yes, please turn on, there's it right uh, in the uh, narthex, there's a box that says brackets. So if yours is completed, turn that in there. If you want a blank one and you want to fill it out, we have blank ones. There's also a box for those votes, for that paper ballot. So turn those in too before you leave worship today. Thank you, Jan, for that question. And then um, the other thing, just to remind everyone, is this Thursday is our uh, monthly lunch bunch. We'll be meeting at the Pomegranate in Naperville. Uh, so there's a sign-up sheet, or uh, you can give Vi a phone call. That's at 1 o'clock on Thursday, and I hope all who are available would uh, join us uh, for that time of fellowship and some tasty food. So with that, those are the word announcements I have before worship. We'll just take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as you're comfortable. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. 
Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting us pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. of God's love and the breath of God's embrace be with you all.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you, as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Colossians. Christ Jesus, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God has, was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to prevent you wholly to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided you continue securely established and steadfast in faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body that is the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of the ministry of the mystery which is Christ in you the hope of glory. It is he who whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Word of God, word of life.
Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her, help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. You made your first picks for the round of our hymn tournaments. And if not, you still have time. You know, Marlene asked already, could she do it during the sermon? And I would say, Maybe just wait a little bit to do that. But, you know, I understand the excitement because we do have quite a lineup of hymns to contend with. There are 64 hymns in round one, all matched up against each other. And I really am anxious to see which ones are actually going to make the cut next week. And I'm really curious and excited to see which one is going to be the favorite hymn of our Savior Lutheran Church. Now this is all for fun, right? But as I talked to Doris earlier this week, she said, this is hard. It is hard. It's different. And maybe you've never done something like this before. And indeed, these things can be kind of uncomfortable and even taxing, surprisingly. You know, just to pick between two hymns, two good hymns for that matter. It seems like we're always having to pick one thing or another. And even in today's gospel reading, the story about Martha and Mary. Now for a short and an ordinary text, the same thing that we do in our culture. When we create a matchup and we judge, we kind of divide ourselves into two camps, kind of just like this hymn sing tournament that we have going on here that oh, your pastor kind of is behind the scenes creating. We're comparing two hymns and deciding which one is better? And so often this particular text has been used to compare and to pit people against one another, especially women. It's been set up as a competition to say that one way of serving God is more important and favored by God. This reason, this reading Are you a Martha person? Are you the dreamer who likes to sit and listen to Jesus and consider the lilies of the field? Or are you the Martha, tirelessly working to do the things that need to get done to make sure this world keeps going around? We pick one and we pick a side. And then, of course, we defend whichever side most reflects us out of fear or shame of being wrong or corrected, and all the while not listening to one another, not listening to the other side. And when we do this, we dislocate the body of Christ. We dislocate each other from ourselves. And it happens every time, every day, even in our churches. Are you Catholic or Protestant? ELCA, LMCS? Are you a Republican or a Democrat? Pro-life, pro-choice, Second Amendment or gun reform? Are you Black Lives Matter or All Lives Matter person? Are you build walls?
But here's the thing. I don't think this is what, I don't think Jesus is against the hard work that Martha is doing. I don't think Jesus is against these worker bees that get things done. Because notice, Jesus never tells Martha to sit down. He doesn't condemn her work. He tells her she's distracted. And in fact, in this short text, two times the word distracted is used. She's distracted by her tasks, distracted by her expectations, distracted by her own judgment of others, and distracted by her needs. And with all those distractions, she's not able to focus on Jesus, to listen and to follow Jesus. Certainly we too can be easily distracted by our 24-hour news cycles and that constant breaking news with social media, busy schedules. We'd be distracted by fear, exhaustion, worry about the changes in our lives, in our community, by being locked up inside of our world. of listening at the feet of Jesus over a life of action and service. After all, Jesus just got done telling the story of the Good Samaritan. You know, it comes right before this passage. We heard it last week. Last week, we were reminded of how important it is to help our neighbors, to offer radical hospitality. We're told, go and do Likewise, God's work, our hands, isn't that our tagline? Rich than to sit and meditate at his feet in thoughtful contemplation. And here's why. Jesus and his entourage have now arrived at Martha's house. And it's important to notice that Martha, the woman, is the homeowner. Martha faithfully and dutifully goes to work of being hospitable, which is the good and needed work. And throughout the Gospel of Luke, hospitality is lifted up as being important and necessary work for the kingdom of God. And as a woman... In that culture, and too often in our culture today, that work she's doing was expected of her. It's known as woman's work. It was the role that she played time and time again. So for the audience that heard this story, there's no surprise here. Jesus. This, as you might know, was seen as men's work, discipleship, learning from the teacher. So once again, Jesus is upsetting those conventional ways, these past patterns, so that Mary would see herself as worthy to sit alongside the men at Jesus' feet and listen and learn. That's the surprise of this story, that Mary could see a new possibility for herself and for her life of actually doing something different or being something different. And that we too, the listener, the faithful, would be reminded of that possibility, of that hope. This is about what is possible when the kingdom of God shows up. Because in the kingdom of God, the world gets turned upside down and nothing is as it seems. Up becomes down. Bad becomes good. And death becomes life. In the kingdom of God, those two words, good and Samaritan, 
can come together side by side. In the kingdom of God, new possibilities open where we, to who we could be despite who we've been and despite the past, despite the we've always done it this way. In the kingdom of God, Mary didn't have to be marginalized back into the kitchen, but she could see herself as a worthy disciple welcomed at the feet of Jesus hearing those words of love and forgiveness that can never be taken away. Words that can change the world. As a woman, over and over again, Mary had probably remained in that same role that was expected of her without ever questioning it. But in this moment, when the kingdom of God is near, there is an invitation laying at the feet of Jesus. Mary has discovered for herself a new possibility by not remaining in that same role that was expected of her, and she grabbed hold of it. So I think the question we might ask is not which is better, but can you see a new reality for your life, for our congregation, for our community, for our country, for the world? Or do we just want everybody to get back to their assigned roles, to stay in their lanes, hold fast to the ways we know that just feel comfortable? I wonder, could we today hear that invitation to set aside all of those distractions and see the world through the lens of the kingdom of God, where what seems to be impossible is possible, where we're not bound by the way the things have always been, but rather the future is open in which God can bring life out of death. Because, dear church, the kingdom of God never says this is just the way things are and the way they will be. And that's the hope I find in this text. Mary could see a new possibility for her life, and we can too. So to make this text a matchup between Martha versus Mary, a contemplative life of Jesus versus the hard work of is a distraction. This is about what is possible when the kingdom of God is near. And in light of the church and the world right now, I pray that we can be like Mary, that we might see a new reality, a new possibility for our life. us and all that it is that we face today and in the days ahead. And I pray that in the midst of all of it, we would continue to turn to Jesus and listen to that voice of guidance and hope. Amen.
Together as the church, we join our voices as one body, confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God of grace. Through Christ, you reconcile all things. Motivate those empowered to end enslavement, dehumanization, or brutality of any kind, and to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples. God of grace. Through Christ, you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your, cause, of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Sustain all those who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers, especially those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. God of grace. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire us, the worshiping community of our Savior Lutheran Church, to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless our shared ministry and help us listen to your presence as we plan for the future. God of grace. Receive our prayer. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace. Receive our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. You may share a sign of God's peace. You may be seated.
God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In preparation for Holy Communion today, I invite you to locate your pre-packaged communion kits that you picked up on your way into the sanctuary. If you are in need of a communion kit, just please raise your hand and one of our worship hosts would be more than happy to bring one to you. At the end of the great Thanksgiving, we will commune together uh, while you remain in your seats, and I will give instructions for that. You are invited to hold up your communion kits uh, during the words of invitation. And if for any individual who is not receiving uh, communion, Holy Communion today, you're invited to make a sign of the cross on your forehead, on your hand, or have a neighbor do that, saying, God loves you today and every day, no matter what. be with you. right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them all on their journeys, and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in the community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
In Christ's presence, there is fullness and joy. Come to the banquet. You may be seated. Here at our Savior, all are welcome to the Lord's table. At this time, you may take out your communion kits, and we will commune together. On the smaller side, peel back the top layer to uncover the bread. Turn that over and peel back the second layer of foil to uncover the wine or grape juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name.
Dear church, go out into the world, proclaiming Christ in every corner, admonishing and teaching with all wisdom so that everyone can comprehend fully the presence and witness of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor.